The New York Jets have to find a way to fix their offensive line, primarily two offensive tackles they're going to be looking for. We got a bunch of options. Well, ESPN has dropped a bold prediction on how the Jets are going to fix the O-line. Before we hop into today's video, I want to thank the sponsor of the channel, SKG Tax. The New York Jets practice and play in New Jersey. Jet fans may struggle with their state tax identity this year. If you are a fan and can't determine how to file your income, call JR the Tax Czar for all your multi-state tax questions. Don't go on the road as a wild card filer. Hire yourself a CPA and defend your home turf. JR, thank you so much for sponsoring the channel. Let's hop into today's video. This is talking a little bit about... Fixing the offensive line for the New York Jets, this was coming by way of Matt Miller's mock draft. I saw this courtesy of Boy Green because I don't subscribe to ESPN+, Plus, so <laughs> I didn't get to see the actual article. But these are the comments that were made. Uh, they're talking about pairing Tyron Smith at left tackle with the drafting of Talisa Fuaga out of Oregon State. Now, you guys can see here, this is uh, kind of what they're saying. He's obviously uh, Fuaga at the Senior Bowl. There's rumors that... Joe Douglas has been scouting him for months and he really likes him and all this good stuff. So you guys can look at Fuaga and my senior bowl stuff that I've talked about with him. Basically, what you got to know, plug and play right tackle, road grader in the run game, just an absolute unit of a guy. Probably the most prolific name that was at the senior bowl this past week. But the other side of things that I think is a little bit more interesting, because I think the Jets are going to solve right tackle in the draft, more than likely. But Tyron Smith, Tyron Smith is someone I really like. I had him on my list of tackles that we could take a look at this offseason, and I really like the veteran offensive tackle route. The two guys that I think are going to come up a lot are David Bakhtiari, who the Jets tried to trade for last year in the Aaron Rodgers trade, but the Packers did not want to trade him because they had Jordan Love coming in as their as his uh, first year as a full-time starter. They wanted to protect his blind side. He wound up getting hurt, having surgery. He missed the entirety of the season with the exception of one game. And then there's Tyron Smith, who the Cowboys are like $20 million over the salary cap. They got a bunch of free agents they got to sign. He may wind up shaking loose. But the same sort of issues pop up with Tyron Smith as they do with Bakhtiari. Both guys, elite top five protectors in this game of the blind side for the quarterback. But the issue is when they are in the game. And Tyron Smith has missed a lot of games over the last four years. Over the last four seasons, he has missed 30 of a potential 67 game, 67 or 66. I don't know if I changed that. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be 67 sounds right. Um, he's missed a lot of time. He's basically missed half of his games over the course of that stretch of time. And with the Jets missing so many offensive linemen this past year, I think we had 13 or 14 different offensive linemen combinations. You could argue that you may not need the best left tackle, but you might need a tackle that is playing at a consistent level and is always available for you. Because when we saw the final three weeks of the season, when Brees Hall really started getting going, it was because we had a consistent five guys across the offensive line. The continuity between five guys on the line is so much more important than the one star studded player that might be on that line. So it's something to, to kind of consider here. And I love me some Tyron Smith. But someone that I think the Jets should really take a look at, and this is someone I talked about back in November when I did my first iteration of the mock draft, and that is Jonah Williams, the tackle out of Cincinnati. He was not, he basically, Cincinnati traded for Orlando Brown last offseason to make him their left tackle. Jonah Williams got his nose out of whack. He demanded a trade at that point in time. The, 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 uh, Cincinnati Bengals were not interested in negotiating a long-term contract. This offseason, they have T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, lots of guys up for contracts. They got to figure out what's going on with Jamar Chase. Do they want to pay him a ton of money right now? Or are they going to wait a little bit? Lots of stuff going on. But Jonah Williams is interesting. And he's one of those cats that's like, he's not great. He's not perfect. There's, there's a lot of things that you want to see cleaned up with Jonah Williams. But he's healthy. By comparison, he has missed eight games in the last 67. So I could make the argument that the consistency might be better with a Jonah Williams as opposed to a Tyron Smith. Now, the other side of this coin that I think is really interesting is the potential that Jonah Williams has to help the New York Jets and how we're going to build out this offensive line. I'm clicking on the wrong things right now. Uh, how Jonah Williams could factor into here. He started out as a left tackle, played three years at left tackle, and then got bumped over to right tackle. So in my mind, I'm thinking if we go after a Jonah Williams, this at least sets you up really nicely for the NFL draft because you're sitting at number 10. You're kind of hoping that Alter Fashanu fall to, to solidify your left tackle uh, woes, but there's a high likelihood that those two are gone and then you have to go you know, after the right tackles, a Latham, a, a Fuaga, a Mims, one of those types of guys. 
does it make sense to roll into the draft with Tyron Smith telegraphing that you need uh, a right tackle and then be forced to go with a right tackle in the event one of the left tackles falls? I think there's something to this. If you bring in a Jonah Williams, you can hide your draft needs to some degree because I very much want to bring back Connor McGovern. So in my mind, if I say, hey, I have Connor McGovern as my center because that's what Aaron Rodgers wanted last year, I would have Titman as my right guard. And then you can sort of pencil in a Lake and Tomlinson at left guard for right now. I do think they ultimately end up cutting him. And AVT is your right tackle. So you might surround yourselves with a little bit of mystery heading into the draft if you have your left tackle kind of taken care of. And Jonah Williams can play left or right tackle, which means it opens up that number 10 pick in the event that Alt or uh, Fashanu wind up falling and you want to take them at left tackle and you keep Jonah Williams, who has played better on the right-hand side, on the right. Now, all of a sudden, you got an offensive line that's looking real nice because let's say you get a Fashanu or a Fuaga, whichever one. You got Jonah Williams as one of your tackles, one of the young rookies as the other tackle. Then you've got an AVT move into left guard McGovern at center, Titman at right guard. Now you're cooking with fire. This is an offensive lineman uh, line class that I could really get behind. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think of Matt Miller's comments in terms of his mock draft? Do you think the Jets are going to go after Fuwaga? Do you think they're going to try and go after Tyron Smith? What do you guys think of Jonah Williams? Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, go Jets. Jets!